And here we go. Ten. Hydrogen burnoff igniters initiated. Seven, six, five, four stage engine start. Three, two, one. Boosters in ignition. And liftoff of Artemis One. We rise together back to the moon and beyond. And here we go. Ten. Hydrogen no, burnoff igniters no, initiated. Seven, six, five, four stage engine start. Three, two, one. Boosters in ignition. And liftoff of Artemis One. We rise together back to the moon and beyond. All four RS-25 engines on the core stage and two solid rocket boosters now propelling the vehicle at 128 miles per hour. traveling at 1,420 miles per hour. The four core stage engines are back at maximum thrust. The next major milestone will be for the solid rocket boosters to cut off and jettison at about two minutes and 11 seconds into the flight, so about 30 seconds from now. Again, quiet here in Mission Control Houston as teams continue monitoring the flight of Artemis 1. We're now 16 miles downrange from the launch pad at Kennedy Space Center, traveling over 2,800 miles per hour. Standing by for solid rocket booster jettison and shortly thereafter. confirmation that the solid rocket boosters have separated these 177 foot boosters. Now the core stage continues to power the flight of Orion, all four RS-25 engines firing, traveling over 3,400 miles per hour, 46 miles downrange.
And you're seeing there on your screen our first Earth views. This view of Earth captured from a human-rated spacecraft not seen since 1972 during the final Apollo mission some 50 years ago. The views of our blue marble in the blackness of space now capturing the imagination of a new generation, the Artemis generation. At 6.44 a.m. Central, just about nine minutes and 30 seconds ago, commands were sent for the outbound-powered flyby burn to occur with the orbital maneuvering system engine, or OMS engine, on board Orion, which sends Orion close enough to the lunar surface to leverage the moon's gravitational force and swing the spacecraft once around the moon toward entry into distant retrograde orbit. Following this, Orion will remain in the distant retrograde orbit for one half elliptical orbit around the moon, which will last about six days. now to distant retrograde orbit or DRO. We're gonna be about 38,000 miles away from the lunar surface as we orbit around. That's part of why we're calling it distant. And we call it retrograde because the moon orbiting the earth in this direction, and then we're entering into our orbit in this direction, opposites retrograde. Now we're choosing this orbit because it's extremely stable. It doesn't cost a lot of fuel to maintain your position there. And that gives all of our engineers, our flight controllers, the chance to really learn about Orion systems in deep space, learn about flying a spacecraft farther than we've ever sent one intended for humans. We're going beyond anywhere we ever went for Apollo. And so we're in that orbit test out all of those systems. Eventually we'll do a maneuver to break out of that, do another flyby and come home. We're continuing to get some spectacular views from the Orion spacecraft. 
from this view, Orion is 1,277 miles above the lunar surface following its return powered flyby burn, which sent it around the backside of the moon. Orion now has its sights set on home. This view is from one of the solar array wing or saw cameras on board the vehicle. The vehicle now over 1,680 miles away from the moon. And that small sliver towards the bottom of your screen, that's here, that's home, that's us. And that is where Orion is headed next. Fifty years ago today, Apollo 17 Commander Gene Cernan and Lunar Module Pilot Jack Schmidt guided Challenger to a pinpoint landing on a barren rock-strewn area of the moon called Taurus Littro. A half century later, NASA's newest moon explorer, the Orion spacecraft, is barreling its way back home after circumnavigating the moon and beyond in an elliptical distant retrograde orbit now less than two hours away from splashing down in the Pacific Ocean, west of Baja, California, to complete its shakedown mission that has opened a new era of deep space exploration. Thank you, Philip. And again, uh, a live view of Orion closing in on planet Earth, now about uh, 11,000 miles away from Earth, as it uh, continues a, a very, very precise trajectory. Uh, for a splashdown that is scheduled at 11.39 and 42 seconds a.m. Central Time this morning. Now just one minute away from crew module, service module separation. We'll be standing by for confirmation of that from the uh, 10 seconds until set. We have confirmation of separation. Orion flying on its own. Again, uh, the separation occurred right on time at 11 a.m. and 11 seconds central time with Orion 3,200 statute miles away from Earth. The European service module has done its job. Just one minute away from entry interface. And this view uh, from the uh, cabin camera 
Looking uh, out of the upper hatch of Orion, you can see the limb of the Earth. We're going to be losing all of uh, the data here shortly once we uh, enter into the Earth's atmosphere and begin the first of the two blackout periods. Again, uh, this is a uh, visualization of what should be happening with Orion at the moment, although we are in a blackout period that should end about three minutes and 15 seconds from now. And we have data from Orion. Orion out of the blackout period. Flight Dynamics reports that Orion is right on the money, coming right down the pike, a good view out of the uh, cabin camera looking out of the uh, upper hatch of Orion. We should be performing uh, the skip entry maneuver momentarily. Good communications established with Orion. This view on the deck of the USS Portland. And there is a view out of the uh, cabin camera of Orion as it continues a series of roll reversals. We have data back from the spacecraft. Flight Dynamics reports uh, Orion straight and narrow on a true course toward its splashdown site. Forward bay covered jettisoning less than three and a half minutes from now. One hundred fifty thousand feet off the ocean. Orion now traveling at Mach 10. Orion now at fifty thousand feet. Forward bay covered jettisoning pyros are armed. Twenty five thousand feet. Drogues have been deployed. Two good drug shoots reported by uh, the recovery team out in the Pacific. The descent rate is right on the money. Orion's uh, velocity now down to 282 miles an hour. Range to splash down one and a half miles. 10,000 feet now. And we're on mains. 5,000 feet. Reefing in progress.
Three good main shoots for Orion. We have three fully inflated main shoots. Time to splash down 90 seconds. Perfect descent rate reported. And there it is, high over the Pacific, America's new ticket to ride to the moon and beyond now in view. Orion under its chutes descending towards splashdown. Orion in the perfect orientation for splashdown, just seconds away. One thousand feet. Good descent rate. Five hundred feet. Splashdown. From Tranquility Base to Taurus Litro to the tranquil waters of the Pacific, the latest chapter of NASA's journey to the moon comes to a close. Orion back on Earth. Orion is in great shape, stable one, just in the orientation that had been expected.